Hello, and welcome to my crafting space. Um, this is Diane Dewald, Stampin' Up! Independent Demonstrator. Um, as I said earlier in the week, I was going to uh, get on live today and demonstrate making your own designer series paper and making five different cards out of it. Uh, I gave you a quick preview uh, in the photo, and here are the five cards that we're going to duplicate today. Now to save a little bit of time, um, and because I need thank you cards for after Christmas, um, we're just gonna use one sentiment, but I showed you in this sample of cards that I made that you can change it up, make it the same. Uh, the world is a, kind of your oyster. So let's get a little housekeeping out of the way beforehand. Um, new month, it is December 2nd, um, 2021, and that means new host code. So if you were to shop with me, you would go out to www.creativecatcrafts.com. Uh, when you put your order in, use this host code. If you put an order in over $150, don't use this host code. Use your own order and you would get all the benefits of, of um, a party for yourself. Have any questions as far as exactly what those benefits are, feel free to send me an email, stamperdiane at runbox.com, and I'd be more than happy to um, give you all those details. So, coming up January 4th of 2022, Stampin' Up! will release their new mini catalog, which runs January to June of 2022, and a short two-month celebration. Who likes free product? I know I do. So I can't open these catalogs until January 4th, but I can tell you there's some yummy stuff in there. And if you spend $50, you basically get a choice of level one items which are free for every fifty dollars if you spent a hundred dollars you can either get two of the fifty dollar level ones or one of the level twos i know there is a level two in here that i am just itching to get my hands on so that out of the way I promise this is we'll get to the stamping here really quickly the July to December 2021 mini catalog is unfortunately um, ending December 31st this month. Um, there are some items that are carrying over um, and then there are some that are also retiring. If you would like to know, if you would like one of these catalogs, drop me an email. Be more than happy to send one out to you. Have any questions as to what's retiring and what's carrying over, again, email me. I'd be more than happy to um, give you that information. Then last thing, and then we'll get into today's project. If you would like one of our annual catalogs, it runs from May to April, year to year. Um, again, drop me an email. I'd be more than happy to get one sent out in the mail to you uh, as quickly as I can. So I have plenty of those on hand. So again, let's start our project. So you can see in my craft space, I have a few things that we're going to be looking at. Um, two stamp sets, the Forever Fern and the Biggest Wish. Both can be found in our annual catalog. The Forever Fern is found on page 63. Nice, big, bold. I love this set. And then the Forever Fern is on page 71. Um, you can see a few little samples here. Very, very versatile. I think this was one of my very first stamp sets. So it holds a very special, special place in my heart. We are going to use the Thanks. And then these four, and I can't remember which one of these two I picked out, but we're going to use one of those. The inks that I'm using are not the traditional greenery. I wanted 
to do something bold and something different. So I'm using our Pacific Point Bermuda Bay, Polished Pink, Gorgeous Grape, Mango Melody, and then the sentiments I'm doing in our Memento Black. So let me get these laid out real quickly. And I'm watching the door for a cat. I have a cat that loves to jump up here on the table with me. And unfortunately, um, I don't want ink paw prints all over my carpet in here. So um, the layout that I'm using, I, what they call cased this from a fellow demonstrator. Her name is Leanne Greff. Um, I find a lot of inspiration from other demonstrators and Pinterest is my, uh, my go-to for um, the writers or the crafters block. So today I will get this, uh, all the dimensions um, and all the details up into a PDF. So if you would like that PDF, again, drop me an email, be more than happy to um, get that over to you. I'll try to post a link in the comments of this Facebook post. So we start with our card base and it is cut. We start with cardstock, which is um, eight and a half by 11. And I have that wrong. That should be five and a half by eight and a half. My apologies. So um, you take one sheet of cardstock, cut it in half, and then you score it at four and a quarter. And we're gonna make these cards landscape. Landscape, portrait. So let me set those aside. Then also, a little different than what I did with these, I wanna do a front mat. So I've got five equal mats cut at five and three and three quarters. And then on the inside of the card, so you have something nice to write on, I have some of our basic white cut at four and five and a quarter. And here is the template and the dimensions. So you can see you've got one, two, three, four, and five, five, five different card fronts that we're going to use. Um, I've scanned this, I'll include this with the PDF. Um, it was easy for me with a ruler just to trace it all out. And what I did on what I'm going to stamp on is in pencil very lightly. I think you can kind of see it. I took that template and traced it out. And what we're going to do is we're going to stamp so that the stamping is in a quarter, excuse me, a corner. So we will start going across this line, down, 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 and down. So I like to start with the biggest stamp. So let me get all of our ink pads opened up here. I like to keep them closed until I'm ready to use them. Otherwise they tend to dry out a little faster than I like. And it also keeps kitty paw prints from decorating my carpet. So first stamp, start, start with the largest stamp first, and we're going with the Pacific Point Blue, and you just tap, 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 and down, tap, 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 tap. Down. Tap, tap, tap. Tap, tap, tap. Oops, a little bit of smudge there. Sometimes that happens if you rock it a little. And unfortunately, I rocked it. But guess what we're going to do? We're going to cover that up. So this particular one, we're gonna use the Bermuda Bay. I love this color. This is one of my favorite colors. There's no right, no wrong. If you find it easier, 
rotate the paper. Watch what I'm going to do here. Boom. Kind of hides it. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful part of this. And nope, because we got that there. That doesn't go there. And just a little hint of one down there. Okay, we're done with the Bermuda Bay. We're now moving on to our polished pink. And these little, I have no idea what these are called, but I just love this stamp. In fact, you can use the same set. Use the gorgeous grape on this one, and you can make grapes, which is really fabulous. And you know, I made a mistake. This card here, I should have been going down the center of or this line here instead of here, so it's going to be a little bit different. That's the beauty of stamping and creating this thing. Um, there's no right or wrong. And guess what? Your mistakes can be happy little, happy little mistakes. I won't use Bob Ross's happy little trees. And I just did. <laughs> tap, tap, tap. Got a little bit going there. Clean that off a little bit. Let's close up the polished pink. Sorry for that loud crack of my stamp base on the table. Gorgeous grape. This is a beautiful color. Ooh, let's get something in right here. Fill that in a little bit. <laughs> nope, nope, we're not going to use that. Just clean it off. And the last color for stamps for the greenery is our Mango Melody. And just kind of fill that in where you think there needs to be a little extra color. Again, no right, no wrong. Okay, do we see anything that is got a hole? Not really. So clean that off. Let's close it up. And you know what? We have these little speckles here. I love just kind of filling in a little bit everywhere. So what do we want to do? Let's do, oh, let's do Bermuda Bay. Oops, my favorite color. One of my favorites. Let's see how dark this is. Oh, I think that'll be fine. And just kind of randomly fill that in. Stamp off the page like I've been doing. Just fill in those holes or when there's like a mistake. I can't even find that mistake I made. I bet you all can find it. I can't find it, but that's okay. Okay, we got that. So I'm quickly going to cut these out. Let me grab my handy dandy paper trimmer. We have a cutting blade and a scoring blade. And I picked up a trick from a fellow demonstrator that if you lead with the scoring blade, you get a really nice crisp cut. So all I'm gonna do is line up all of our pencil marks. 
That's a piece of scrap, so we don't need that. And this one, let's put that at the top, down. Piece of scrap. I will pick those up later. Otherwise, my other cat who doesn't come up on the table, she's my, we nicknamed her Chewy because she's my paper and cardboard box chewer. So I notice here there's a little bit of a pencil mark there. So I'm just gonna take that off. There, done, gone. Line that up, and there we go. We have our designer series paper. Now this one should have been like this, but I started stamping down the wrong edge, but that's okay. I think in fact, I did that on my original set. So quickly, I will get my thanks inked up and I put it over here in the, oops, make sure that's got real good coverage and just kind of hold it down, let that ink soak into the paper. I like to do that, especially with the sentiments and the black. Other side. Oh, getting some really good crisp. And this one, we're just gonna kind of put it off to the side just a little since I kind of messed that one up just a just a tad okay there we are so get our bases together there let me flip this over so we have a clean surface and it's Front mats first, and the handy dandy mono liquid multi glue. We just refer to it as the green glue. You don't need a whole lot, so whoa, it is real. This is a brand new tube because you do not need this much glue. And then center down there. What I like about this glue is you have a couple seconds to get it scooched around, as I call it. And I see a little pencil line here. Look at that, all gone. Now it doesn't want to come out. <laughs> Had it primed and ready to go, and then it didn't want to score it out. Okay, get that down. Ooh, that was pretty good. Oops, just a little bit. See, see how it slid? And see a little bit of pencil line there. glue. Butterfingers. <laughs> I was hoping to get this done in 20 minutes and we are just over 19 minutes. So we're probably shooting for about 25 today. And last one on the mat. And then I'll bring in our card bases and I'll kind of repeat the same process. Each of the card bases. And I chose one of each color because those are the colors I chose to stamp in. Really doesn't matter. Um, 
which one goes with what. If you've got, um, make sure it's opening the right way. I would hate to put this in upside down. I've done that. And what I was saying is it really doesn't matter. If you've got one that has more blues and you want to put it with the blue, um, creative, creative license, I believe is what that's called. So did you see what I was about ready to do? I just about had that upside down. The beauty of the glue is it wasn't set yet, so I was able to salvage that before it became permanent. There's a few times where I didn't see it until it was after the fact, and then it's too late. And sometimes you can pull them off Usually with this glue, it doesn't work that way. Oh, I am really liking this with the black mat. I knew there was something missing on my first set of cards that I made. Okay, so there we got that. And I am using the In Color Jewels. Unfortunately, they don't have a blue and I have used up all the pink. So for the blue and the pink, I am going to use these black matte dots. And I have a little pegging tool that I just love. It's got this little um, sticky end and Ooh. adhesive remover to the rescue. Look at that, all gone. I picked up that at a craft store. Um, Stampin' Up! does not sell those, unfortunately. And for here are the thanks, we're gonna use these purple dots. Oops, little kitty hair there. And this is pale papaya in color, but it'll coordinate there with the mango melody. And I think I'm gonna go with the succulent versus the evergreen. And the last thing we have to do is the card inside. I'll put one of them in and put the rest of them in later that way you can see one of the other cards I made with a different stamp set. Oh, and you know what I was gonna do with, with this? Oh, really cute little trick. Same color as the card base. That was the yellow. This was the green. And all I did, let's clean this off real quick. Gotta stamp the inside. And there you go. Beautiful. Repeat that process for all of them, like I did in the original set. Let's close this up because I hear a kitty coming. And here we go. Here are our five cards created from our own designer series paper. And there are a lot of stamp sets that Stampin' Up! offers that you can do something very similar. Um, for example, let me move these out of the way so you get a really good look at these. This was using uh, one of the snowflakes. Unfortunately, this particular set is retiring, but there is another one that they are carrying over, I believe. So I used, again, five different inks. I used a matte, our balmy blue, and I just used a white card base, so that way I didn't have to put anything in the middle. And since it's winter and snow, there you go. 
Well, thank you very much for joining me this afternoon, and I hope you have a great rest of your week. Thank you.